Machine. Hey, what's up with it, y'all? Welcome to my podcast, Cold Narratives. I'm your host, Iceberg Green. About to let y'all hear some of these cold narratives. Check it out. She raised us to be proud, strong black women. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> she raised us to be proud, strong black women. You kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's up with it, y'all? Iceberg Green. I'm back at it. So in my last episode, I went hard. I went hard on Kamala uh, just based on the fact uh, the blended family. I didn't understand that. And uh, I was asking questions about the father. So I researched and I found this channel, Panda Genius TV. And I'm sure this is a Pan-African channel. Um, and I got some content from them. And this is breaking down uh, the history of her father. And this is from three years ago. But uh, we're going to break this down. His name is Donald Jasper Harris. And he's a distinguished professor and economist from Jamaica. Harris immigrated to the United States for his studies back in the 60s, and while studying at UC Berkeley, he met Kamala's mother, Shaimala Gopalan, who also immigrated from India to the U.S. at the age of 19 to pursue her dream of becoming a cancer biologist. And there's another woman whose name isn't known, whose story isn't shared, another woman whose shoulders I stand on. And that's my mother, Shamala Gopalan Harris. She came here from India at age 19 to pursue her dream of curing cancer. At the University of California, Berkeley, she met my father, Donald Harris, who had come from Jamaica to study economics. They fell in love in that most American way while marching together for justice in the civil rights movement of the 1960s. In the streets of Oakland and Berkeley, I got a stroller's eye view of people getting into what the great John Lewis called good trouble. Good trouble? You were locking people up for weed. Is that good trouble? Oh my goodness. Where did see this is what I'm talking about? The relationship, it, it don't make sense. And I'm sure after she did that, he had something to say about locking people up for weed. He's conservative. So, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to see this making sense now. It's just, uh, yeah, but uh, check this content out, though, y'all. It's, it's coming together. I'll be back. Professor Harris's social justice activism is also vouched for by Ghanaian politician Dr. Kweku Safo, who was a former student at Stanford University, where Harris had been appointed tenured professor in 1972, three years after graduating from the University of California. In a statement submitted to Face to Face Africa, Dr. Safo describes Harris as a Pan-African intellectual who often attended African Students Association events, where Dr. Safo served as president. At Stanford, he was a leader in developing the new program in alternative approaches to economic analysis as a field of graduate study. The interest in Africa and the relationship with Africans at Stanford brought Harris into a strong friendship with the famed Ghanaian professor of economics, the late Tete Kofi. So remember the uh, statement she made on the Breakfast Club, I believe it is, with Charlemagne, and she was talking about smoking weed. This was a while ago. I'm sure everybody know about that, right? And when she made that statement, her pops didn't like that. He, he didn't like that. So... He uh he made a statement and uh they gonna show you in this man but check this one out. They say you oppose legalizing weed. That's not true. I know. <laughs> and, and and look, I joke about it, half joking. Half my family's from Jamaica. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and I or and or I inhale. I did inhale. I did inhale. He issued a statement saying, My dear departed grandmothers, whose extraordinary legacy I described in a recent essay on this website, as well as my deceased parents, must be turning in their grave right now to see their family's name, reputation, and proud Jamaican identity being connected in any way, jokingly or not, with the fraudulent stereotype of a pot-smoking joy seeker and in the pursuit of identity politics. What a blast at his daughter who wants to be the next president. No kidding. He added, um, and he had sent this uh, statement to Jamaica Global Online. He said, speaking for myself and my immediate Jamaican family, we, we wish to categorically disassociate ourselves from this travesty. The inside story as to why Professor Harris remains a footnote in his daughter's publicly told story. Okay, so this is where it gets, it gets really interesting. And, you know, I, after I watched this, 
I'm telling y'all, what once y'all see this though, but this is where it get kind of twisted. But uh check this out right here, y'all, and, and I'll be back, man. But this is interesting. In a 2018 piece titled Reflections of a Jamaican Father, Professor Harris revealed that his paternal grandmother's ancestor was Hamilton Brown, a patriarch who is on record as a plantation and slave owner. That aspect of a family's history would have been difficult for many to disclose. The complex moral and political aftermaths of European slavery often drive perceived offenders and offended to seek refuge, but here was a man an incurable academic, divulging a niggling bit of his own identity for the sake of scholarship and society. See, this is what I'm talking. Man, listen, y'all. I, 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 I'm, I'm protecting my vote by doing this. Y'all know that? By doing this research on the people that's about to get up here and make policy and change it. This is me doing my research, and I this ain't helping her case for me, y'all. Wow. Isn't this kind of like a wild situation for a lot of people? Maybe some people know about the night. A lot of people may know about it. I didn't. And maybe some of my listeners didn't. But I'm not done with it. Check this out. Starting from the University of Illinois and then to Stanford, where he was the first black economics professor to receive tenure in 1972. He was once referred to as a Marxist scholar whose challenge of neoclassical economics unsettled many at the revered institution. Now 82, Harris has been retired from teaching since 1998, but it is intriguing to mention that he would have shared the economic ideals of his daughter's colleague in the U.S. Senate, Bernie Sanders, rather than Kamala's own brand of progressivism. Nonetheless, the professor approaches social justice activism with the open palms policy intellectual honesty would require. Okay, so what I will say, he's, um, he's accomplished. He's done a lot. Um, Stanford, that's a prestigious college. He back then too, so he was able to rub elbows and, as you can see, uh, meet a lot of people. And this guy, um, I, I can't pronounce his name, so excuse me, y'all. But but Kenya, and isn't Barack from? Hey, listen, I, I'm I may be a conspiracy theorist, but there's something going on here. Uh, hey, this is just my public opinion. But he's, you know, he's prestigious, so I'm sure along the lines he met. You seen the pictures, like. Martin Luther King and activists like the Black Panthers. I'm sure he had an opinion on those, those things back then. And we were never able to hear his stance on a lot of stuff. And I think that's where maybe they clash, of course, because he, you know, he's conservative. So I'm sure he doesn't agree with a lot of the policies she's enacted over the years, um, systemic type stuff. And I'm sure, I'm hoping he's not with that. Um, but yeah, let me get back to this content and I'll be back. And she raised us to know and be proud of our Indian heritage. However, Harris writes in his 2018 piece that even after a bitter divorce, he persisted, never giving up on his love for his children or reneging on his responsibilities as their father, describing the end of his marriage as abrupt and a subsequent battle for the custody of the kids hard fought. He also rude not being a part of the journey as Kamala and Sister Maya became respectable lawyers and significant national voices. But Harris has been supportive of Kamala's success as a senator, and there is reason to believe he will be heard now that she's on her way to becoming one of the most influential people in the world. Perhaps his qualms with her could be forgiving in light of her new status. When outsiders try to make sense of the relationship between this daughter and her estranged father, all missing links constitute the responsibility of the lead characters to provide. But so far, the absence of a perfect picture has not been hurtful to each other's public profiles. Okay, there you have it. I know what disassociate me. And um, hey, that makes a difference. That makes a lot, a lot of difference. You know, that's her father. And I understand he wasn't around. Her mother had to raise him. I, I definitely understand what that's like. <clears throat> um, you know, I definitely understand that. I'm just getting to the point where I, I wanted to understand their relationship. This is not to, um, you know, delineate, you know, myself from their situation or life. I'm just trying to see what I'm voting for and see the type of relationships people have with each other. If I'm going to vote for them, because honestly, on the flip side, we can honestly see now on the flip side, because I was trying to be cool about it. We can actually see now why. She locked up so many people for weed and, you know, didn't care about uh, locking parents up for truancy. You can actually see the, uh, 
is that vitriol or some type of something that she got against pops to where she is making a making a statement by doing this i got the power i'm about to lock up a bunch of uh, black people because i care about this side of the family more i don't know call it a conspiracy theory call it whatever but it's starting to make more sense to me i'll tell you that much you know straight up and this was a lot to break down you know i'm just happy i was able to find it so i can get some clarity because we all need that you know we all got to be honest with ourselves don't sit and walk around here playing stupid like you don't know that there's a big situation going here you know with this presidency with this presidency it's a lot going on okay on both sides so like i said you know it's vote for uh tupac is vote for malcolm x is vote for you know one of your uh heroes your black american heroes put them in there Write them in there, you know, you know, write somebody, a congressman that you know is making waves, somebody that you know is making waves, put their name in there. They, I mean, what, they, they, at least now they'll get a vote. Honestly, y'all think about that. If you, if you write someone's name in there and they have some political uh, pool or somewhere and they working hard to get their name, put their name in there. And I'm thinking now, who would name I could put in there? Somebody that's making it, some go, uh, you know, some uh, somebody that's on uh, our policies, on this uh, grassroots reparations movement. You feel me? That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a policy. You know, C's, excuse me, policies. A bunch of them, y'all. Yes, insurance, yes. Life insurance policies, yes. So that's what we're looking for, and reparations is that. That's our life insurance policy, y'all reparations is our life insurance policy so get it you know get it correct government and while a lot of this stuff is going on we got to pay attention okay because all that performative stuff you're seeing on tv this is what's going on behind closed doors so if you can't you can't tell me this ain't getting in the way of what she's thinking and what was what she's doing it, it had an impact on her politics man and i'm just keeping it real y'all i'm sure it did but uh, I'm, I'm done. You know, I, I'm done, man, with that, that topic. And I'll move on. But y'all have a good one. And I'm out. I want to thank you all for tuning in. I also want to say God bless those going through the struggle. Make sure you watch out for them cold narratives that the government trying to push on us, y'all. To all my black people, I will be nothing without y'all. God bless you all.